Hi guys, in this video we will cover adding a self-signed certificate as well as having a look at the fifth way for boot images. Also, we'll have a look at how to apply licenses and configuration of login banners. So I've got my Genius 3 version of Cisco SA built. I've also got the demo mode running of ASTM so we can use either of these for demo purposes. So the first portion we'll have a look at is the certificate management. And if we go to configuration, device management, uh, certificate management is here. We can add certificates from the identity certificate section here. So by default, there's no permanent defined identity certificate, which means on every reboot of the Cisco SA appliance, you'll need to trust the certificate again because it generates a new one. So you can create a self-signed certificate to fix this, or you can alternatively purchase a publicly recognized certificate as well from someone like VeriSign or Trust. And because all browsers trust those key PKI players, the browser will not prompt you to trust the certificate. Also, another option is if you have a CA server in your organization, uh, you can provide your Cisco SA with an identity certificate and all browsers will trust the certificate because they will trust the certificate of the certificate authority server in your organization. So if you're using any of the latter two options, a CA root certificate must exist as well on the Cisco SA appliance and you implement the CA root certificate from here. But we're only concentrating on the identity certificate because we're creating a, a self signed certificate for this uh, demo purpose. So we can do that by clicking add here. And then if we click on add a new certificate, and then we have to specify a key pair. So you can create a new one from here uh, and give it a name, or I've already got one here called test. So I'll use this. And if we click on generate a self signed certificate, and then finally click add certificate that will generate our self signed certificate. So if we click OK there, it's created our certificate here. So it's issued to the uh, CN of Cisco SA and it's issued by the Cisco SA appliance as self signed certificate. And that's done. So now there's a permanent certificate on the Cisco SA box, and even if the Cisco SA is rebooted, the certificate will remain. So the next part is the looking at the boot images of um, the Cisco SA and how they are managed. So if we go to configuration device management system image configuration here, and the second option is the boot image configuration. So we can um, add a number of boot images in this section here. So boot images uh, lets you boot from a specific image, including an image on external memory. So you can add up to four images uh, the Cisco SA can boot from, and the options provided to boot from are TFTP and Flash as well, which we can see here. So you can uh, specify Flash, uh, an image from your uh, Flash file, or if you've got a TFTP server, you can specify the path here as well. So the boot order, uh, this will display the order in which the binary image file will be used to boot. So always boot from the first one. If, if it's not found, then it will boot from the second one and so on. Uh, the boot image location, that's uh, that will specify the physical location or path of the boot file. Also, what you can do, you can specify the ASTM image file, by the way, from here as well. And you can also uh, use other tools to um, import the image into the flash file. So you'd need the images on the flash file before you can uh, choose your images and etc. So if we click on add here and we browse flash, you can see uh, the flash file from here. So if we cancel that, we can import uh, further images into the flash file. So from file management or even if you're doing upgrade, you can upgrade software from local computers. So if we go to file management, and you can do file transfers of uh, images. So you can do it between local and uh, local PC and the uh, flash file. So if you click on that, uh, you've got the option of specifying your images from, your, from our Windows machine here. And then you can click on this button once you've selected the image. I will transfer it across uh, to the flash file system on the Cisco SA. I've also got uh, 
if you're upgrading the software, you can upgrade from here, upgrade software from local computer, and then you can specify the image. So let's say Cisco is here. You choose the image, browse local file. Uh, you, you, I've got no images to um, upload, but you choose the image. Once you've selected the image, the flash uh, file system path will be automatically specified for you here. So you can even browse and you can um, choose the path where you'd want the image to be placed. And then you can uh, upload the image from here. Okay, so the next part is the licenses. Um, so we can do that from, again, configuration device management, uh, licenses, which is somewhere here. So licensing here. And if we click on activation key, if we use the demo mode, because this is uh, a much newer version of uh, ATM and Cisco uh, image. Go to configuration, device management from here, and then licensing here. Click on activation key, and this is where we can specify and have a look at licensing. So the permanent activation key here, uh, the serial number and the uh, permanent activation key are specified along here. Um, come as part of the Cisco SA as permanent items, which is a base license. So Cisco SA licenses do come with uh, base licenses to run the core firewall, but additional features need further licenses, such as the kind of high availability licenses. So we can click on show license details here, which uh, shows what the license comes with, such as let's say maximum VLANs, 150 maximum VLANs, etc. Uh, new activation key. So here, uh, for any additional licenses purchased, you will need to add them from here. So you can just copy and paste your licenses in here and click update activation key at the bottom here to uh, upload further licenses. And then we've got time-based licenses as well. So time-based license key uh, keys installed. And uh, time-based licenses are time-based and not perpetual. And so we require renew usually once a year. So uh, for example, SLVPN licenses, anti-spam, anti-phishing, URL, botnet filters are all examples of time-based licenses. So if you select the time-based license, uh, such as this one here, and you can click on show license detail, um, it will show you further information about the license, such as license feature, SLVPN, botnet, traffic filter with this one, uh, the value of the license, so up to 750 users, and the botnet is just enabled, and the duration of the license, so when it will expire, so in 104 days for the SLVPN, and 104 days as well for the botnet traffic filter. At the bottom, you've got effective running licenses, which is in this area, it shows the features uh, based on the total licenses. So you've got all the uh, features here and the license values as well as the duration here. So the final part of this demo is looking at banners. And we can access banners from um, device management again, and CLI, so management access, CLI and banners here. So you have the option to add a session banner, a login banner, a message of the day banner, as well as an ACM banner. Um, so the session banner appears when a user accesses privileged exec mode at the CLI. And the login banner, which is the second one, uh, this appears when a user logs into the CLI. The message of the day banner uh, appears when a user first connects to the CLI. And finally, the ASDM banner uh, appears when a user authenticates to ASDM. So if we go to the uh, GMS3 uh, image, and we can click on CLI here, for example, banner, let's just put one in for ASDM, such as unauthorized accesses. So you can apply that, 
and then just do a save running configuration to flash. That saved, we cross that off. Yep. And then we run APM again. This may take a short while. Um, quite quick actually there. Let's say continue and I'll wait for that to start the application and hopefully we should see that uh, banner message. So this is going to possibly take uh, a little longer than it usually should because it's uh, connected to my GNS3 and everything's uh, taking up a lot of memory and it's uh, running quite slow. Hopefully once it's um, gets going, we should see the banner message for APM. It's still uh, verifying the application, so it's letting me log in. I've not really specified a username or a password here. And here's the message. So unauthorized access is prohibited and then we can uh, continue and it will let us uh, log into the just first game and that's it for my uh, demo for today uh, i'd like to thank you for watching